Hello everybody, my name is Yvonne Hogevorst. I'm the associate trainer of Will Faber from Art to Ride in the Netherlands. And this is my first video with Wilco for uh, the associate trainer program. And this video is about working hands and about lunging. You're looking at uh, uh, Wilco, who is uh, 13 years old. I owe him now for almost three years. And we have uh, quite what, some problems uh, with his health. And uh, for the last few months I had a health problem, problem myself. So we just started out working again. Um, and, well, as you can see, um, he walks fine. But he must um, be more stretching down to uh, the sand, uh, so more stretching to the bit, which he does here a little bit. I use the working hands uh, mostly as a warming up before I ride or I will lunch, and um, well, it takes. Um, some time to get him warm, but he's not doing very bad here. As you can see, he is tracking up from behind uh, over his back to his um, bit, but he must be more consistent. That's what I'm looking for. He's going down a little bit more, and he must be active as well. The position of the, the trainer, which is me in this case. <laughs> Um, must be beside of the shoulder, so uh, not too far forward and not too far back. So you walk with him in the same direction as his head goes, this is tracking up. So you walk with him, and you can see my uh, my reins are very long, so uh, he gets uh, the space to get down with his head and neck. That was one side and now I do the other side and between that I give him a sugar coop. <laughs> We're here at the stable which uh, we moved in about three weeks ago I think. Because of the health problems of Wilco, he's gained a lot of weight, um, he's, he did become too fat, uh, which is uh, better now, I think, uh, as you can see. Um, but I moved him from another stable where he was 24-7 on the, on the grass, on the pasture. I moved him to another stable where he's uh, in daytimes on the pasture and in the night uh, in the stable. So I have more control of his uh, feeding. He's getting more consistent here, as you can see. One side is mostly uh, better than the other, so um, that doesn't matter. You work both equally, both sides equally, and then uh, it will accomplish itself. My whip, uh, I'm using my whip here to get him more forward and more active from behind. And, see, and it is important that you don't restrict him on the front side of that. But he shouldn't rush into it. So the, it's always um, fine tuning, I think. That is better. But as I say, it's not consistent enough. So I move his hind leg a little bit further out. And let him walk more uh, beside me and around me while making the circle a little bit smaller. <laughs> that day uh, it was uh, 30 degrees. I don't know what it is in Fahrenheit, but it, it was very hot. And uh, you can see uh, with his tail, he's uh, moving the flies uh, <laughs> from his back. And, well, I can imagine it, um, it bothers him a little bit. 
you see that I uh, do a little bit of leg yield here and I use the leg yield just to get more stretch. So I move him away from my whip to my outside rein and then I want him to stretch more. And as you can see he's getting more relaxed now and he's stretching better. It's not consistent enough but uh, it's getting better. So I use the exercise leg yield or, or uh, shoulder four just to make him more stretch. And he's doing a good job here. Here you see me tapping with the whip a little bit outside. So it's not bad, but it could be better. Um, I hope in a few weeks that he will be consistent enough, more consistent than he is here. But as you can see, uh, lots of uh, big steps here that he makes. And he's active, so for this moment I think it's good. And then we go on to the lunging. I lunge will go in long side range here. And I do that because I, th I think it's important for him to have an outside rein. So the inside rein I could just um, get it off, but well, it's easy, so I put it on both, on equal uh, um, length. So uh, not uh, the, the inner, sh inner side rein shorter, but uh, as th at the same length as the outside rein. And you can see here that um, I'm working on the stretch in the walk here, but Wilco will um, explain this um, inside leg of mine, the, the, the whip, the driving aid, that he will be go more forward, and that's good, but he's going to trot. He rather give me a, a choppy trot than a good walk. That, that is what you see here. I try to make the circle a little bit smaller and get the whip um, to drive him forward, not too much, but as much as he, need it, he needs it. Did. Well, his walk is good, but could be better, could be uh, more over the back, could be more stretching, so he will come over his back. Well, he's doing his best. And as I said, sometimes you just have to be patient to give the horse the opportunities to sort it out for himself. You give the aids and he, will, he must respond. So sometimes you have to wait for it. Especially when you're um, at a time off of working, you just need this time. But it isn't bad. Could be better. <laughs> Wilco always um, will give a better stretch in trot than in walk, at least on the lunch line. So um, you can see that later on. And I think the long range are a little bit restrictive here. But later in this video, I you will see that I'll uh, take them off shorter. A circle here, smaller, I should say, smaller circle. I'm sorry, I'm not a native speaking English, so, um, well, I hope you understand anyway. <laughs> well, that's better, but it's not consistent enough. Mostly after the canter, he will stretch better than before. But he is active, he's not uh, curling back in his neck, he is uh, sorting it out uh, long and low, poking the nose out, so that is good. And I just started with a long rein um, about in a little bit shorter than, uh, than, than it could be. 
Um, so I just started it this way. Um, in uh, previous submissions that I sent in for, vid for Will, uh, he told me, he gave me that tip. Because Wilco is a little bit hard to go into the stretch in the beginning, he said, well, you can take your long range long enough, so his nose will come out and be sure he's not curling back, but um, give him a, an outside rein. And when he does, and it, it, and it went well, then you can lengthen them. So uh, that is what I will do here later on. So here's my first uh, uh, trot. And then I'll uh, lengthening the long reins. So we just can go a little bit further with his nose out, further stretching. Uh, sometimes I work with the sham bone, but the result is uh, the same. It doesn't matter if I take the long rein or the sham bone uh, for Wilco, it's the same. When he is warm, he's stretching, and he, then he's stretching very good. But before that, it's always a little bit of a struggle. So, I just not need to be patient, I know. <laughs> And that is what uh, this horse is learning me. Be patient. Sometimes I want it too much, too quick. And it's not a machine. So. Here it gave me a canter when I was asking for a little active trot, more active trot. But I let him here, so... He's not cantering bad at all, but I uh, keep it limited for one or two circles, not more. And then you can see there he is. And I'm looking here for the optimal stretch. I'm looking here for the most relaxed trot with the biggest step uh, which the horse can do. Sometimes I speed him up too much yeah, because I want activity, then he's speeding up. And I don't want him to speed up, I want him to be active. I want him to seek into the bit to the stretch in an active way and not rushing on the forehand. So this is getting better. I have my lunch line through the bit ring over the pole. That works the best for Wilco, is my opinion. Sometimes I lunge him on the cover song. Well, it will do also, but it doesn't matter to him at all. But I don't want him to uh, be clipped on the inside bit ring, the lunge line, because I'm, well, I don't want uh, pressure on one uh, side of his mouth. But that's personal, so um, some horses are well doing that, doing that very well, and some of them are, well. And now his, his walk is getting better also, as you can see. It's more stretching, more low, nose is fine out, pointing out. Wilco is a little bit of a diesel. I don't know if that the word is, but uh, when you have a, a car and you have a uh, gas well when you have diesel all those motors are having a lot of time to warm up so that that's what i compare it with uh, with wilco he just have he just needs time time to warm up and then well you can see he's very good i think uh, at this trot he is coming into the zone as we speak easy mouth his ears are a little floppy and even his tail is more relaxed, so that tells me that he is uh, relaxed at the moment. 
and when he is relaxed and when he is stretching and when he's doing well, well, um, I take off this, the long side range. So uh, when I don't need them anymore, I put them off. But first I go to the, uh, the other di direction. So here we go on the other way, change ways. And don't make the classical mistake that uh, uh, you think that when you go the other way, uh, you will um, go further where you stopped at the other side. So when he's good on the uh, uh, right side, it won't uh, tell you that he will be good on the left side. <laughs> For horses, that's a big difference. You're starting just over again on the other side. So I just let him walk his own uh, walk, but then I will uh, ask him to bend his neck a little bit more to me here, and then I will point out with my whip so he can uh, get more of a leg yield here. But one way is easier than the other way, so. Notice that I don't get a slack in the lunge line, so I'll keep in touch with his mouth and sending him forward with my whip. There are periods that I do a lot of more walking work than I do here in this video because I want you to see the trot as well. And, well, he is uh, better stretching in trot, so um, sometimes I do a lot of more trot, and sometimes I do uh, uh, sooner the trot, and sometimes I do it later on. But I always come back to the walk when it doesn't work, so uh, that's the, the cardinal rule, I think. <laughs> But as I say, it's it's a horse. It's not a um, it's not a machine. So you have to take a good look at what is happening with your horse. What does he do? But I'm convinced about the fact that when he's getting more over his back, and uh, when we are working uh, a longer period in this work. Uh, and consistently, so not uh, once or twice a week, but uh, on a daily basis, that he will go in, that he's going to be better in the in the walk work, and better stretching and well. But as I say, it takes time. And sometimes he lowers his head, but then he is, uh, has a lack of activity. So, well, we just have to sort it out. I think he's not freely forward enough here, so I'll um, get him more forward here, as you can see. He has a little bit of difficulty with, uh, uh, with the corners, with the rounding on the left side. That's a little bit a mistake of him, so okay. I just start uh, one round cantering to see what it does to him. Not curling back with his head or his neck, so that's good. 
but it's not over the back as well. So we go back to the trot. And there he goes again. A little bit more. That's better. And you can see that he's getting some thrust off the ground. He's pushing himself more off the ground here. He's more bouncy. And that's what I'm looking for. And that is the point where when I uh, use my uh, whip, he just don't rushing forward, but he is more active on his hind end, on his hind legs. And before that, when he is a little bit hollow, then I'll send him forward, but then he will go flattened in and uh, more flat and more uh, rushing. And now it's getting better, so I think I'm going to remove here the side reins, I think, yes. <laughs> to see if I get a um, more optimal throat. When I got Wilco, he was trained on a more traditional way, so uh, we did take a lot of time to learn to stretch, to learn uh, to seeking for the bit and not working back with your hands or, or your reins or what. And that, that did take a while, but um, he's better now. He's, he has not uh, has any atrophy on his muscles in his back anymore. But muscles build, building muscles takes also time, and they are stretching more out in the walk. But it could uh, be a little more active. But as I say, uh, when I'm uh, just coming too much in with my whip, he will go rushing on the forehand. So that does not make sense. He just have to be more. Stretchy, more um, his abdominal muscles must be more um, working for him to go over his back, and that takes that surely does take time. So I just don't want him to rush uh, forward. And sometimes when I'm lunging, I think, well, he's not quite active enough. So I will tap him with my whip, but uh, he just can't um, again, give me uh, a better um, trot at that moment. So then he will go rushing. So I just first have to wait um, with the muscle building. Um, well, he, sh he should, he must, can do it. So <laughs> I have to wait sometimes. And when he's good, I take a little bit more. And when he's not, I take a little less. And as I say, it, it's not a machine. So um, the optimal throat is, of course, active over his back, stretching out. Um, and that's my goal. But. And I want that goal now, and I want that goal yesterday, and I want that goal tomorrow, but <laughs> I just have to wait until he's um, that far, until he can do that. But he's getting very, uh, he's getting better all the time, so I don't complain. So here I take a little bit of a walk at the end. And that's about the training I did that day with 30 degrees uh, and sun and um, a lot of flies. But uh, he did very well. So 
just for one week work again. Um, I think he did a good job and I hope um, that I can let you see uh, in another video later on that he's getting better so you can follow him in his uh, development. I hope. <laughs> So this was Yvonne Hogevorst from the Netherlands. I hope to see you soon. Goodbye.